Lastly, naivety and arrogant fundamentalism. This is from chapter 10. Like, again, like, <clears throat> what the author talks about is this inability to change beliefs. Um, you know, and this is what's called the fixation of belief. That there's only one answer. That your religion, your belief system is the one answer. We really get this in, in Go God Go. This is really like something that they dissect. And that this fixation of belief relies on the fact that this is the way and I'm not fucking changing, right? They, you know, we're not going to change our belief systems, right? Um, and South Park exposes this. They expose naivety. They expose um, what they would, you know, the author calls an arrogant approach to, um, to God, um, you know, the world, and being human, like where, you know, or naive, right? Um, which they really go into uh, in the Book of Mormon. Um, but, you know, the important thing what Matt and Trey get into is like how fundamentalists use dogmatic views and they see them as the way, the only way, the best way, the right way, the just way. And what they, how they kind of talk about naivety is how we interpret texts. Um, that, that when you read the Book of Mormon, it is the book. It is the true meaning. It is the truth. It is the way. Okay, when you read Dianetics and you're getting your Thetans up, it is the way. It is the truth. It's not a truth. It is the truth. It's the truthiest of truths. It's the most truthful truth. It's the only truth. And due to naivety, due to believing that this is the one truth, right? This is the greatest truth. You become arrogant. So through your own naivety, your own being naive, and believing a truth as the truth, you become arrogant. And really what South Park explores and the author talks about is like, the issue is not your beliefs, it's how you hold them, right? And, and all about Mormons, you know, it's not so much about the beliefs themselves. That Yeah, they admit that it's like the beliefs are, you know, one should be skeptical of them, but it's, it, you know, how the Mormons hold their beliefs, they're, they're not dicks about it. But we watch the episode on Scientology, and hey, yeah, the beliefs of Scientologists may be a little bit out there. That's not, that shouldn't actually be the problem. The problem is they're total assholes about it, and they'll sue your ass and balls when you critique them, right? And the issue here and I love this part is, you know, there's a difference between confusing your will, what you want as God's will. And this is one of the things that they really get into when they get into Scientology, when they get into Mormonism. Joseph Smith's will, what he wanted became God's will and because he made himself a God, the same as L. Ron Hubbard, what he thought was right, what he wanted, his will, his choice, his path, their paths became the path of God. And they told people that was what God wanted. And that is an issue. And that's what Matt and Trey have an issue with. Interpreting your desires, your human desires, you know, as God's will. And then people believe that naively as the truth and then exercise the truth in an arrogant fashion. And that's what they have a problem with. Anyways, that's a little bit about Scientology and Mormonism. We are going to move on to our last two modules in this class. We'll talk about gender and sexuality, and then about uh, drugs and our bodies. Okay? Hope you all are well. Take care. Um, I'm about to get my woodwork back on, do some staining and some sanding and stuff. I will check you on the flip side. I hope you had a nice uh, Memorial Day, uh, long weekend and all that stuff. It's Real Dr. Dre, DJ Fruit Snack, here at Goat Be Goat's Beard Homestead. Um, I'm going to try to get outside uh, and get to another part of the farm for the last couple lectures and stuff just because this shit's boring in here for you and for me. Probably way more for you. 
Um, but hope you're well. Take care of yourselves. Peace.